All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and today is Wednesday, May 15th. And a really nice reversal in stocks from this morning. Uh, we'll talk about the S&P. We'll talk about, uh, we'll go through all the index charts first. And, um, you know, I'll tell you, uh, it was just really impressed by the uh, um, the analysis that, that we've done the last week or so uh, on, the, on the index levels, right? So last week we gave a member webinar and we talked about several levels to watch. And I had, if anybody, this was a member webinar that we did, but uh, you know, this video of course goes out to all. And uh, if anybody wants that a copy of the webinar that, that we gave, which talks about the value areas, talks about the virgin point of control, uh, what these things mean, why we look at them, really a high level, uh, set of definitions and then we drew in to some practical some practical applications in the indices and basically what we said was uh, this was back here so this is what today's Wednesday so uh, I think it was a week so this was Tuesday Monday Friday so I think it was here we were just barely hanging on to value and we talked about what would happen if we broke value where we would find support and we talked about three different levels that we that we talked about in support in s p futures the first one and again i've been tweeting about this for the last week so you could go through and you could look at the the levels that i tweeted about but um the first one first level of support that we said was on the daily chart which was 2822 again things that have to be taken out that were lingering and when you get a pullback you want to see these things taken out right another thing that i've been talking about is is checking the box uh so when when you get a pullback you want to see some of these levels taken out uh this still needs to stand by the end of the week 2817 that's your that i think now will be your support going forward uh this is really important on the weekly chart right we've moved all the way through the value very very little hesitation had some in march uh, we reached the high and then we're checking back so again this is that's not a negative thing uh, we just have to hold the check back right a breakout of value and a retest uh, that is perfectly normal uh, we what needs to happen obviously by the end of the week and and so forth is for us to hold the retest and then to continue to, to climb higher again there's nothing wrong with coming back and doing a retest um, the reason why I'm repeating that is because you know it is what it is the financial media they're they're selling ratings and they're telling you uh, every day the sky is falling if it's you know to do the analysis I think is a much better way to go and and you know control your process and your trading plan and that's the best that you could could do right we can't control the headlines and we can't control obviously you know the, over the last week you know they're kind of feel like they're dying they died down a little bit today but we can't control some things right we can't control the price we can't make predictions but we can basically ad adapt uh, adapt our trading system to to what it's giving us and and honor those support levels the other level that we talked about which was which was the third level down so we had 28 22 28 17 and then on the one hour which was the last one to get to get taken out was this one 2817 so again we talked about these a week ago in wednesday night's webinar uh, again just i'm really happy the way things went and i know um you know webb who came on uh who you know put this indicator together you know he said he was getting long 2822 which he did in s p futures and that trade uh is working out really well for him so uh, notice where we are i want to just stick with the one hour and then we'll go on to we'll talk a little bit about nasdaq and and maybe tlt as well we'll talk about what we traded today and, and just uh the game plan going forward for the rest of the week um s p uh real nice again real nice reversal from where we were when the market was kind of falling out of bed this morning uh retail sales hit this morning which was a tad lower uh, these were my comments in the trading room this morning when we talked about retail sales basically said that uh you know it's a little bit of too much focus i thought on uh, you know every month I think you kind of have to smooth it out a, a little bit, right? I mean, everybody looking, oh, geez, point, negative 0.2 versus plus 0.2 expectations. 
But, I mean, you look at the previous month. The previous month was really strong. So I don't think, like, this is a huge negative to see this go flat for a month, even though, and, and also the bad weather that we've been getting as well. But the previous month was revised up a tenth of a percent, and that was strong. So you kind of just, you know, one data point I don't think is just like... Um, you know, one candle on a candlestick chart is not a trend. So, uh, Trump may. So, here, speaking of headlines, we got another one. Trump signs order that may limit Chinese telecoms. So, who knows? Maybe we get another dip tomorrow. Uh, so, that said, and the other number that was strong was Empire Manufacturing, right? Nobody focusing on the strong, everybody focusing on the weakness. Uh, that said, we need to get. Um, you know, this was interesting, I thought, for the afternoon that we actually held. We did not sell off. I think the, the afternoons have been very tough lately. You know, we need to see uh, a trend reversal there. And we kind of got that a, a little bit this afternoon. Uh, and we did close just barely in value. I don't know if this headline by Trump is going to move things around. Uh, and then there's another headline out. Look at this. Uh, not on Trump, but uh, PCG power lines cause California's campfire. Wow! So, may, so it looks like they're going to be liable in some uh, in some sense there. But yeah, so so for tomorrow, right? So level to watch for tomorrow is going to be that bottom of value, right? And again, these value areas are really good for for support and resistance. I try to tweet them out as much as possible, but twenty. 853 right because and the reason why is we always want to know what the overall market is doing uh if it's if it's grinding higher or if at least it's flat as long as it's not falling apart i feel like i can pick winners in the market but if everything is falling down and failing at at you know resistance uh then you know you we may have a little bit of a harder time right so we always want to know what's what type of investment landscape that we have so that's SP again very important that'll be 20 uh 28 2853 call it for support for tomorrow cues cues were a little bit of a different picture um but they're also <clears throat> fully realized move from for today they also took out without going through without rehashing all the analysis that we did but also a virgin point of control taken out here and a reversal uh, we're right into resistance for this as well so uh you know a great place i think at the end of the day to take you know to not be too greedy and take some targets uh which is basically what we did today in the trading room um iwm we talked about and you know we also gave a member webinar last night as well that's why there was no public video but one of the things that i was looking at um you know there were some good and some bad uh we went through last night's webinar was basically what i call a chart forum right i went over all my charts we went over probably about I don't know, close to 50 different single stock charts, and um, which is really good because uh, some of the charts that members were bringing up were ones that were a little bit off my radar. And um, the one that we went over, so let me just finish with small caps as I, I tend to jump ahead, sorry. But small caps, I, I was noting that yesterday was an inside day, so we just needed a little bit more information and um so you know we got a we got some progress we're back above this candle you know if you want for iwm you could set a stop basically back to here you know some somewhere in here but i will continue to be focused on watching small caps i think that'll be interesting again really not that much of a technical move back um so i think small caps again will be good to watch so i you know with a really nice rally today and i'll go over some single stock moves but uh, you know one day again isn't a trend so it's nice also today's the 15th of the month you know the 15th of the month and the first of the month that's when new money is put to work by some you know institutional funds port um pension funds so tomorrow's not the 15th of the month so i don't expect we'll get the same type of price action uh for tomorrow but um i think things are starting to look you know, uh, you know, better and better, right? Um, in terms of price action, uh, and in terms of uh, market breadth as well, I think mar market breadth was better today. Uh, the only thing that really underperformed today was the banks. You know, bonds. I want to go over. You know, I still think that um, you can have a long in bonds uh, as well. TLT is now back to this version point of control. Uh, if you look at the weekly chart, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago the bounce off of major support so again breakout check back move back 
And in TLT, if you're in TLT, I would be targeting 130.50, which is about four or five bucks up for uh, a place to get out of a trade. So again, still like bonds as well. You can like them both. So what happens? I just want to talk about some of the some of the implications when bonds continue to rally. You know, things like. It's been pretty crazy moves, like um, you know some names that I'm really not in, but just kind of watching, because I really don't want to get long General Mills uh, up here. Uh, it's I I like playing, you know, or having maybe a trade on in in one of these names, but um, you know names breaking out like this that are consumer staples, um, I will be kind of sitting on the sidelines. You know, I'm looking at something like J and J at this point, that has a higher dividend yield. You know, uh, hammer on the 200-day moving average, rolling back into the two again, uh, rolling back into the 200-day moving average. Uh, I don't have a position on that there, but I'm I'm watching. I think it's also important to watch this relationship. I tweeted this out last night, but I understand some people may not know what it is. SP, this is SPLV over, uh, so that's low volatility equities over high beta equities. There's two ETFs, SPLV. Uh, again, that's low volatility equities, and that's in the numerator, and I have in the denominator high beta equities. Notice what this has been doing for the month of May. Since the month of May, low volatility names like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Utilities, uh, General Mills, right? Those have been rallying, but for the last two days, we've started to see high beta come back a little bit, and I thought that was pretty... Th now, this is where it gets interesting, right? If you look at the whole month of May... In how many days that um, high beta has outperformed in the month of May? If Bloomberg will cooperate with me, so just we got two days here. This was the biggest outperformance. Now, by the way, look at Monday, huge outperformance of low volatility over uh, high beta. But um, you could see all the green, right? May, the beginning of May, uh, sorry, the beginning of April high beta really outperformed and for that whole week so you know that was the last time that we really saw high beta outperform so you know maybe we've got something going on here um, and we'll see if that continues for a couple days so again just something to to keep an eye on to see if that two-day move continues so uh, I'll talk a little bit about what I've been doing <clears throat> um, you know Koopa software this was a name that so what really I concentrate on when we uh, have a pullback is not only on those support levels that I mentioned in S&P, but also from a stock perspective and a sector per per perspective, what names are outperforming? What names are hardly going down when everything else is? Coupa Software was a name that you, you don't even see a pullback, right? PayPal was a name uh, which was in which was the top pick in our weekend newsletter. Right, I mean, it had one day where where it looked a little bit weak in here, but has held really nice. Um, Mastercard is a name that I have on. Uh, we talked about Twilio this morning, yesterday, the day before. Um, really, really strong, basically closing on the ties um, in the member webinar, which is great because uh, you know I used somebody's somebody said, hey, take a look at the chart of MDB in last night's webinar, and. Um, you know, we caught this one today. I went, I did not hesitate too long in the morning once I saw this thing start to take off and I had a good support level to trade against. Uh, I went long uh, this name and my support, I've got my defined support, which is when the 50 day moving average lines up with the bottom of value. Very nice. And that is uh, 134.15. So I did take a target in this uh, close to the highs of the day, but I like the chart and I'm looking for a move. Um, up to 145. So really nice here. And I could go through more, you know, more names in this space, but clearly, you know, this doesn't happen by accident that these names, these names are the market leaders, right? Um, finally, uh, you know, Google got a price target raise, which got this name going today. You know, maybe a false breakdown for Google. Notice that VPOC being taken out. Um, Amazon had a nice bounce on the 50-day moving average, which is good, right? And, you know, unfortunately, uh, again, I'm not trying to uh, be critical because I know so many watch the FANG stocks, but, you know, look at the difference between, you know, say an Amazon or a Netflix. Um, the reason why I bring this up is because there's an, an Atwilio, right? What would you rather own, Netflix right now or Twilio? 
right? For me, I it's 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 a no-brainer, right? I mean, these these are the market leaders. Could they get rotated out of? Sure, and that's why you take targets. Um, so again, the video is for information purposes only. I'm telling you what I'm doing. I'm not giving any advice or anything like that. But you know, if you're worried about some of these names and they're they're really high valuations, then you take targets on you know when this happens or when Coop hits a 52-week high, and then you use a trailing stop. Um, and again, watching price action, I think, is so much better. Um, what else? A couple other names. You know, what else does does well when interest rates on the long end of the curve go down? Um, I think Lennar looks interesting. Um, it does have a virgin point of control to target up here, but I I looked at a few of the home builders because they are showing some decent uh, strength. Again, they're not <clears throat> they don't have the momentum as as obviously the software plays and the cloud plays, but still I, I think you know from a diversity uh, from a diversification standpoint, you want to have a couple names that may not be this that whole group. Uh, let me just look at the semiconductors. I like the SOX ETF better than the SMH. Um, I think if this gets back into value, so 198.51, I think will be interesting. We did see a little bit of call buying. By the way, we saw call buying, you know, after the fact in MDB today. You know, after the move is made, then call buyers come in. So. Uh, you know, there's something to be said uh, for call buying, right? And option flow, I think it's a good ID generator. But I think if you're doing your homework, you find the names that they're buying, right? It's not by accident. It's not because they know something. It's because, well, maybe that happens in about 10% of the time. But if you're doing homework, you'll find these setups before the option activity. It's so much better to be in these names before. Uh, before the option activity. And then once the option activity hits, then you can sell into that, right? That's the whole game. And I think that sometimes Twitter gets that confused. I think some traders are waiting for option flow. I think that's a great time to sell, not to start to buy for the most part, unless they're really early. Uh, and, and again, a lot of these names that I'm mentioning, Coupa Software, uh, Twilio, they really haven't seen much call activity. There's, you know, so again, uh, if you're if you're very dependent on option activity, I think there's better ways to to, to look at things than just, um, you know, watching the tape is important. But I think you'll you'll find these just by doing your homework, um, and that's what we do in the room too. Uh, what else? I think that kind of covers it. Yeah, so I'm interested in socks. Um, and I think I mentioned NXPI, which is a name that I've been watching. Um, NXPI for me, you know, it was a small call buyer in there today, but um, it's got to get above 101.41 for that to trigger for me to kind of get out of range. Um, a few other names that I was watching today, just to kind of go around. Uh, STZ didn't close where I wanted it to. Uh, where's my level? There's a level that I saw. I think on the weekly chart, I'm looking, yeah, so at the end of the week, I'm looking for STZ to get above, you know, call it 208. Uh, and that, so again, move into value, um, you know, kind of check back here, but it's got to get back into value. But I think that would be a good setup. Again, obviously a big move already from like 170 to 205, but it seems like it's digesting a little bit. So that's a name I'm watching. Uh, I think I had one more name. Oh, RealPage, another kind of software type name, but saw some call activity. Um, this one, I think on the weekly chart, it's got to get back above, what is this level? 6085, so call it 61. So again, you know, I would rather be a, maybe a little bit late on some names. Um, this could also, if you play it now, you could also take it off here at the bottom of value for a shorter term swing. But uh, again, a, a, lot of, um, a lot of opportunities and, um, you know, as always, just because, you know, uh, I'm, I'm showing a little bit of, of enthusiasm after today's move. It do, again, it doesn't mean I want to get over the, the tips of my skis with risk. Remember, everybody seemed to do that on Friday when everything looked great. We had that big reversal on Friday and everybody, all kinds of people were doing victory laps on Friday because of this hammer bar. Um, I thought that that was a mistake. Um, I wasn't expecting us to, to fall down like we did on Monday. But, um, you know, getting overconfident 
and and bragging on Twitter is is probably the last thing that anybody that you want to do when you're trading. So so that's my final message. Good progress today, although it was 15th of the month where new money gets redeployed. But I think a lot of names are starting to look a bit healthier. Again, Rome wasn't built in a day, obviously. So you take things one day at a time. But um, overall, very much liked today's price action. Uh, P&L up nicely over the last couple of days. Have a great day and I'll see you guys tomorrow.